Topic 11, Purchasing and Strategic Sourcing. So here's the introduction for Topic 11. And you do purchasing every day. And you might even try some strategic sourcing on your own. Have you ever searched on the internet trying to find where you can get a certain product? Well, that's sourcing, but we're talking about strategic sourcing. So you're going to use some other factors to determine which supplier is the best supplier. So we always start with a quote with our topic. So how does this reach out to you? What does it mean to you? Purchasing power is a license to purchase power. So think about that. Purchasing power is a license to purchase power. So think of any large retailer or large company. They have a lot of purchasing power, right? Well, if they want to, they can purchase power, not electricity. But if they wanted to and they weren't uh, afraid of getting caught, they could possibly buy politicians, whether in the United States or other countries. They may pay for inspectors to maybe look the other way or actually pay for what they need to. So the, when the inspectors come around, they're in compliance. So uh, purchasing power is both good and evil. Can be used for good, can be used for evil. So you have to be careful. Now you can look around the world and see where this has been both directions. But this is a supply chain class. So let's move on and see what do we need to know when we're trying to come up with our purchasing and strategic sourcing. Well, we need to know four general categories. And when I say we need to know, we need to know these extremely well. And you'll learn these more and more when you get out into your careers and you actually do it. So it's one thing to be told it, it's one thing to read it, but when you actually do this on a daily basis, it's gonna make a huge difference for you and you're really gonna understand it. So the first thing is your resources. You need to know everything about what you are buying. So if you were to source projectors for a new classroom, and I ask you, you know, the specifications that you're looking for. Well, what are some things that you might be looking for? You might be looking for a brand, which you may not need to be looking specifically for a brand at this stage. You might want to look at the connections it has. Does it need an HDMI connection? Does it need display port? Does it need a ethernet connection? Does it need other type of connections? What about how many lumens, how bright is that camera or that uh, projector? Well, those are kind of things that you need to know. So when you source something, you get exactly what the customer wants. Now, once you know everything about what you're buying or you have all the details that you need, now you can start looking for suppliers because you're going to look at their products and see if that meets what you need, right? So you're not going to look at Chick-fil-A for a projector because that's a fast food rest, uh, location where you might want to look at Infocus, HP, Hisense, Sony, Samsung, all these different companies that are technology companies that have projectors. You might even want to look at Christie, which makes movie theater grade projectors, depending on how big is the room. For example, the large lecture rooms at the university probably have some pretty high-end projectors because they need to put a quality picture out there so this, everybody in the classroom can see it. So once we figure it out and we narrow down what supplier we need, we need to know our purchasing process. And when I say we need to know our purchasing process, this is all the details. So do you need any type of approvals to buy this type of item? So it's there's a huge difference between purchasing a vehicle and purchasing a projector. Well, if you're going to purchase a vehicle, 
is there anybody else that might need to be involved in saying, yes, we can get that vehicle? Does your organization have a fleet manager? They might need to be involved in the approval process because they're the ones that are going to have to be maintaining that vehicle. Or if you are getting uh, walkie-talkie radios, you might need to talk to a spectrum manager for your company, if you use a lot of them, to know what the technology, specific technology that you need in it. So that goes back to your resources. And then making sure that it's approved. If you work for the federal government, there's a lot of approvals that you need to get outside than just slapping down a credit card because you say, okay, let's buy it. So knowing your purchase process inside out. And then finally, we have the technologies. There's so many technologies out there to help us track this process. To know, for example, the resources. How do you find out that there is a need from an internal customer that needs a projector? How do you know that? Well, someone can walk in your office and tell you. Someone can submit a request on a piece of paper. Someone can send an email. Well, what about putting it into a computer system? That way you have all the data right there. And you can send a message back or, and forth, and it's tracked. It's logged. And it's there for the entire process. And then once you make that purchase, you mar mark it that it's purchased. And then let's say in two weeks, it pops up again saying, did it arrive? And now you can track it and say, well, did it? Maybe the warehouse or your receiving dock can go into the system and mark it as received. And then the customer can be notified to go get it from receiving or however the process is with your company. So there's a lot of knowledge that you need to have in purchasing and strategic sourcing. Now, I just kind of glossed over it, but this, these four areas are the big ones. And if you apply this to your own life, you do these already. You probably already have a process on how you purchase things. Do you look at your bank account first to see if you're if you can afford it? Or if, the, if it's over a certain dollar amount, do you do something different? How do you track it? Do you not bother tracking it? Or do you put it into your phone? Or do you write it down on a sheet of paper? How do you, I mean, what technology do you use? Technology can be a pen and pencil or a pen and paper or a pencil and paper. It can be that. It doesn't have to be the fanciest technology in the world. So I want you guys to think about when we're going through this entire topic is how do, how do you already do this? Because none of this should be a surprise to you guys. You all do this already. So next, let's go ahead and further define what is purchasing, which will be our next topic for the next video.